Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes and X-Plane 11. For this slide I'm going from Taipei in Taiwan to Shanghai in China in an Eclipse 550. It is a freeware Eclipse 550 and you can't really see my cursor so you can't see me hovering over the buttons uh, but the buttons in here do work despite it being freeware. Whoops. Uh, like at least the electrical ones on the left side here. Uh, the cabin air seems to have clickability. Let's call it clickability. I don't know if the the actual functionality works. And the light buttons here and the gear lever, you know, those work. And uh, well, not the throttle lever apparently, just hovering over it. Nor the flaps; those do not seem to have clickability. But anyway, that is the cockpit, and this is the exterior. It is a sunny day. Which is good because I want to fly over Taipei again because uh, we didn't really get a good look at it last time because it was too cloudy. And we're going to have a little spot of flaps here. And I am going to... Well, first we need to continue with the audio. As before, we are listening to audio from Apollo 13. We will probably not get to the Apollo 13 accident, the um, oxygen tank and the service module basically exploding. In this uh, flight, I don't think, unless we take more than an hour and a half, it'll take an hour. It's uh, basically an hour and a half in the audio future. Uh, and I expect that this flight can be done in an hour. We'll see, though. Anyway, so I'm pressing play on that so we can listen to that as our background music. Music. <laughs> audio. Let's put it that way. It's okay, music yeah, to my ears. Step six through 12, but step seven is They're going the through uh, six, limb activation eight, checklist. Short. They're only one okay. So, here we go. Okay. Okay, step seven follows. Circuit breaker, Oop. panel 11, AC bus B, helium, PQGS, propellant display, close. Okay, we are Circuit off. Circuit breaker 11, AC bus B, numeric lighting, close. And let's just quickly Circuit take a look at Taipei while we can actually see it. Bus tie inverter one close. Circuit breaker panel eleven EPS inverter one close. Circuit breaker panel sixteen instrumentation six sensor close. Nope, I inverter turned one. a little bit too far. Okay. So actually, Taipei is nestled among these mountains in sort of a valley, okay. a river valley, was whereas the airport is outside of the circuit of mountains, closer to the coast. Six sensor, close. Then inverter one select. Take a look inside the cockpit here. Then helium monitor to super crit press. Report super crit press. I sort of like this new generation of cute business jets, like the default Cirrus Vision SF50 and this. Okay, and the, the last part of step seven is report super crit pressure to MCC. And read back step seven. Shanghai is basically in the opposite, well, it's mostly north. It's not really in the opposite, opposite direction, but... We are making a detour here.
So there you see Taipei sort of arrayed alongside that river. I don't know what the river's name is. Unfortunately on my map it's in Chinese. Okay, that's I should probably bring up Google Maps, but not while we're still on MCC request, perform step nine. in the middle of climb that procedures, I guess we could say. We're not strictly speaking climbing, the, but uh, to the gouge we've already given you. we are not in a normal you stable flight. Is helium monitor to off. And in fact, I'll be descending here to off. Over. so we can get a better look. I don't know if we have like Taipei 101 or a building like that or anything that I would recognize. Okay, step eight says, uh, we can see uh, some clumps MCC of buildings. Home. There seems to be nine, numerous uh, sort of uh, business districts. Off. Off. Oops, clouds. Roger, that's correct. Okay, step well, we got below them real quick. Yeah, numerous business districts rather than just one activation three and four. with all the buildings. Um, I don't know if there is like a downtown area. Okay, configure step 10, configure circuit breakers. Hard to pick one clump of buildings over another. Roger, that's correct. Step 11 is uh, deactivate the utility lights if you activated them. And step 12, which is the last one, is transfer to CSM power, usual observations, and report time to MCC. Okay, uh, well, bringing up the Google map, It looks like it's the Tom Sui River. T A M S U I. Sui is water, so I guess it's the name of it is describing the kind of water in the river. I don't know what Tom might be. If the pressure is between 770 and 800, I think maybe this is like an old downtown area. Not sure. Anyway, we should turn towards Shanghai now. We'll go towards the Chinese coast and then head north from there to minimize how long we are over water. Okay, go ahead with TLC dash three. TLC. Okay, stand by. There's another airport here. It is like the domestic airport. Uh. Yeah, the, the area on our tail there appears more like, and I think maybe that's a rendition of Taipei 101 to come to think of it, but it looks more like a uh, downtown area than anything else. Uh, Roger, we'll hold off on that. It was a short three-step procedure which said repeat uh, activation pages 1, 1A, one and 2, but there was another step in it that nobody understands. There so was another step in it that nobody understands, that yeah. That you repeat the procedure we just passed up for reading the uh, the supercrit pressure. Yeah, don't just uh, do steps steps we'll 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 that nobody understands. That's all we got. Yep. Okay. So Apollo Control Houston at uh, 50 hours 51 minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, we experienced uh, some communications difficulties during that extended conversation. However, that was, uh, I'm uh, taking a look at the speed to, the limb, uh, to see where our max speed the, uh, is. I don't expect it's in the same place as airliners. It's probably a little bit below to, uh, that. Get uh, readings of the uh, super critical helium pressure in the limb after uh, Jim Lovell and Fred Hayes uh, go inside Aquarius. Fred Hayes uh, copied uh, that report uh, for Apollo 13. 
We now show uh, on our displays Apollo 13 at 168,000. Oh, we're not getting close to it yet. Miles, uh, out from Earth. So another view of Taipei. Unfortunately, uh, parts of the city seem to have the photo scenery seems to have been clouded over. Continuing to monitor at uh, 50 hours 52 minutes. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. We will see how Microsoft does with the photo scenery in Microsoft Flight Sim, the new edition. Thirteen, Houston, go ahead. Okay, uh, one thing, Joe, uh, just want to double check again. Uh, all the stuff that, that normally was going to start at 57 hours, which the first item was pressurized, he up to 5.7 PSI. We're going to move that up to 54 now, so we uh, we have our limp entry, which was nominally at 58 and 55, is that correct? That's correct, Jim. Okay. This is Apollo Control Houston at 51 hours, 3 minutes, and now into the flight. Apollo 13. Uh, Shows an okay, nice clouds. We'll be going over water for this bit at least. One nautical miles relative to Earth. And uh, traveling at a velocity mm, still of looks uh, clear on the to 55 feet per second. Speed. Among those presently at the Oh, wait, there's the red line. Communicators console okay. here in mission control. Good is, times. Uh, yeah, airliners would be at 340 or something like that. This is at 300 knots indicated. We're at 51 hours, four minutes we are currently flight. headed towards Fuzhou, fairly large city. doesn't appear uh, like this plane has any sort of pressurization of the, uh, pressurization uh, system to fiddle to around with to stir all the cryo tanks at slightly more frequent intervals much to my relief than have been planned and the first time is now and we'll be calling you probably every five or six hours except during sleep periods and, uh, and high activity periods we'd like you to do it now uh, the uh, max indicator speed seems to be coming down the higher up we go Okay. I think I have a sense of it. And so, last views of Taiwan. See. This is Apollo Maybe that's good. Houston at uh, 51 hours uh, 17 minutes uh, now into the flight. We presently show Apollo 13 at a distance of 169,111 nautical miles out and uh, traveling at a speed of uh, 3,445 uh, feet per second. In the uh, mission control center we're having a change in uh, capsule communicators. Vance Brand uh, has reported in uh, taking the place of Joe Kerwin. We're at uh, 51 hours 18 minutes now. This is Apollo Control Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 51 hours, uh, 29 wow, minutes. Wow, the uh, higher up we go, it really came down that indicated airspeed. I guess Mach 0.62 is the best we can do? No, if that's how it is, that's how it is. And traveling at a velocity of uh, 3,436 uh, feet per second. Uh, we've had uh, no communications uh, with the crew of Apollo 13 for about the last 30 minutes. It's uh, very possible that they've also stepped ahead uh, the eat period uh, in their flight plan. We'll stand by, however, and continue to monitor. And at uh, 51 hours, uh, 30 minutes into the flight, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston.
This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 52 hours, uh, 7 minutes. Uh, now to the flight of Apollo 13. Our digital display presently shows uh, the Apollo 13 spacecraft. Seems like the winds uh, are against us right now. 170,752 nautical miles. Well, 71 knots sideways Continuing to us. To now to speed That's of, not great. Uh, 3400 to 10 feet per second. Well, actually, it's sort of hitting us in the front, so it's definitely headwinds. Here on the uh, second shift uh, that the uh, white flight control team has pulled at uh, this point in time. Most of the flight controllers uh, talking things over with their respective back rooms. Uh, we uh, have not had contact. That's why we're sort of tilted a bit, I guess. Almost an hour. We'll stand by continue to monitor at uh, 52 hours uh, 7 minutes into the flight uh, this is Apollo Control Houston maybe maybe not we didn't seem to be turning even though Apollo we had 13. rolled a bit Go ahead, uh, Jim uh, just a uh, Advisory, uh, expect a caution and warning on H2 tank one. Pretty quick, uh, no problem, just warning you about it. No problem. Well, it's not the H2 tank that's the problem, actually, okay, but it's all very Pressure suspicious. Maybe I've listened to this part before. I feel like I've like heard this before. I don't know whether it's because right. I've heard it before well, or we'll send ECOM. whether because we actually heard it on the previous flight already. That was Vance Brand uh, with a caution and warning light advisory timed almost to the second. Jim Lovell responded from the spacecraft. Uh, we're at 52 hours and 9 minutes now into the flight and show Apollo 13. At 170,831 nautical miles above the Earth, traveling at a speed of uh, 30. Well, we are here. Per second. Shouldn't be too long before we see the coast of China. Gene Kranz uh, just spoke to the ECOM and said, uh, "That's pretty lucky." And then he said, "Oh, correction, that's pretty skillful." We're at uh, 52 hours. Uh, 10 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Now we can still sort of see Taiwan in the distance, especially thanks to the sun casting rays on the water surface. Understand uh, uh, some grits, huh? Ciao. Bon appetit. Apollo Control Houston, that was uh, Fred Hayes, a native of Mississippi, saying it's uh, time for some grits in here now. Obviously, his uh, conversion. Uh, we're describing its mealtime. We're at 52 hours, 18 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, 52 hours, uh, 23 minutes, uh, now into the mission. Apollo 13 is presently uh, 171,246 nautical miles away from Earth. Its uh, present uh, velocity reads uh, 3,399 feet per second. Continuing to monitor, this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 52 Oh, somewhere hours, under that mass of clouds of is the, of the coast 13. of China. 
for the sure. 13 spacecraft now shows a distance of 171,726 uh, nautical miles away from Earth, traveling at a speed of uh, 3,389 feet per second. We've just received a further update uh, from the uh, flight dynamics officer uh, with regard to uh, predicted uh, time and coordinates for the S-4B impact. We now read uh, a time of impact of 77 hours, 56 minutes, uh, 45 seconds, with uh, coordinates uh, now displayed uh, here in Mission Control of 2 degrees, uh, 33 minutes south, 18 degrees, 18 minutes west. We're at uh, 52 hours, 37 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. All right, sir. Just expect that same caution and warning to come on again. And uh, do you want us to keep warning you of that thing? Roger, Jim. Uh, just expect the caution warning to come on again, the same as it did about an hour ago. Roger, how are you reading me now, Jim? Apparently not so good. <laughs> Funny sounds. Cloud contraction. Can you see anything down there? Still over water. it's something serious. Food experiences aboard Apollo. He didn't say what kind of experience. He reconsidered. Oh, Control, there we go. Houston, uh, 52 hours, uh, 48 minutes now into the flight. Spacecraft Apollo 13 now at an altitude of 172,125 nautical miles and going at a speed of 3,381 feet per second. In that uh, last conversational exchange, we heard from both uh, Jim Lovell and then later describing the ham salad sandwich uh, Fred Hayes. We're at uh, 52 hours uh, 49 minutes uh, into the flight and continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control Houston.
This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 53 hours, 8 minutes into the mission. We now show uh, Apollo 13 at a distance of 172,771 nautical miles. The strip and, into uh, the rate of speed of coast has taken longer than I thought it would. This is Apollo Control Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 53 hours, 8 minutes into the mission. We now show uh, Apollo 13 at a distance of 172,771 nautical miles and uh, traveling at a rate of speed of 3,367 feet per second. This is Apollo Control Houston. Well, I'll forego flying directly over Fuzhou and instead turn north here. Partly because it's cloudy anyway. Yeah, the incident occurs right after that TV spot at 55 hours. Let us mull that one a minute here and I'll get right back with you. Houston at uh, 53 well, hours. Now the winds will give us a, more of a boost. Apollo hopefully. 13 uh, now at a distance of 173,207 nautical miles and uh, proceeding at a speed of 3,358. Checking the red line. That now last we're, we're skirting it. Us, uh, from spacecraft commander uh, Jim Lovell. There's a discussion uh, here in the control center now as to what our response may be. We're at uh, 53 hours, 22 minutes, and continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Also, uh, Houston, Apollo 13, uh, we'd like to move up the wastewater dump. And maybe the so we're right here, right, right off the coast of Fuzhou. But, you know... This is not where Shanghai Shanghai is up okay, north. Standby. That is where we're headed. Apollo 13, Houston. Go ahead, uh, Houston. Uh, Jim, you're cleared to go on into the LEM. And uh, just advise, though, that the TV time is still fixed at 55 hours. And, uh, so uh, we'll be standing by to support your entry and we'll get back with you on a minute, in a minute on the O2 fuel cell purge in the wastewater dump. Okay, sounds good. And uh, also request your oh. LAM oh. slash CM Delta P. Sudden uh, cloud reset. Which is on the flat plan for 53 hours. What did you vent it down to, over? We could sort of see some land and the uh, forward left there. Okay, you vented down to 1.7, and uh, what did it start at? It was about 1.1 then. Roger, copy. The plan after Shanghai is to go to South Korea, and uh, land at Seoul, Houston, hours and, and then minutes, uh, we'll proceed there from there. The, uh, from Shanghai to uh, Seoul is going to be a DC-9. Clearing the Apollo. 13 commander and lunar module pilot uh, for going into the limb uh, about an hour earlier than 
had previously been planned. However, uh, the uh, television transmission time will remain unchanged at uh, 55 hours ground elapsed time. We presently saw, show Apollo 13 at an altitude of 173,422 nautical miles and at a velocity of uh, 3,354 feet per second. Oh, we're this slowing is down Apollo a bit. Control Houston. Okay, no, don't go down, otherwise we will go over go speed. Ahead, This is Apollo Control Houston, uh, so we have Jim Lovell and Fred Hayes cleared to go inside Aquarius a bit early, and uh, they're proceeding in that direction now. Although uh, Jim Lovell is presently the only astronaut to have taken a second trip uh, top the Saturn V, and is the first of his group to make a second journey uh, to the moon, this evening uh, will mark his first step inside the lunar module in flight. The Apollo 8 crew uh, circle the moon uh, with the command and service modules only. We'll stand by and continue to monitor at uh, 53 hours, 36 minutes into the flight. Oh, uh, uh, here's the 13. Seems to be some land down there. Go ahead, Apollo 13. Uh, we'd like another confirmation when we close the tunnel vent uh, valve back to uh, lap CM Delta oh. P, we were reading about 17. We need to be a little bit more definitely and north. We have some islands uh, down there. Oh, it's a little less than Hopefully, two. the clouds will clear up ahead. There, is it, uh, is there, there seems to be a gap there. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll ask that question. Stand by. Apollo 13, Houston. Apollo 13, Houston. Jim, uh, that increase in pressure is normal because it was uh, just tracking an increase in cabin pressure. And 13 from Houston, uh, it's okay with us if uh, you want to move the O2 fuel cell purge in the wastewater dump up to this time over. Okay, we'll work it in uh, shortly. Thank you. Right. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 53 hours, uh, 44 minutes into the mission. Apollo 13 uh, 
At the present time, 173,934 nautical miles out from Earth. And uh, now going at a speed of uh, 3,343 uh, feet per second. We're at 53 hours, uh, 44 minutes, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Try to see you, what's down there. But it's tough. We're certainly over land. Oh, 13, Houston. Well, okay, maybe a little bit of water there. Oh, yeah. uh, Jim, recommend you stay in the PTC until uh, we stop it for the TV at Dong Shan will be to our right eventually oh, yeah. after. Roger, recommend you about 10 minutes. PTC until 55 hours over. Apollo Control Houston, uh, ECOM uh, confirms to Flight Director Gene Kranz that the uh, fuel cells are being purged and the water dump being accomplished at this time. Uh, that's affirmed, Jim. How do you read now? Okay, we're reading on it, clear. Okay, uh, the only comment that we just made was that uh, in case you were thinking of stopping PTC, there's no need to stop it until 55 GET when the TV starts. Right, we'll stop it uh, when we're setting up our uh, TV. Roger. Just a reminder, PTC is the passive thermal control, them rolling a barbecue roll to even out the heating around the spacecraft. And it doesn't look like I've got photo scenery around here anyway. I think. Just judging from the textures. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 53 hours, uh, 48 minutes. Uh, ECOM uh, confirms to Flight Director Gene Krantz that the cabin pressures are being equalized now. We uh, presently show Apollo 13 at an altitude of 174,070 nautical miles and uh, traveling at a speed of uh, 3,340 feet per second. We're at 53 hours, 48 minutes. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Just pretty rugged terrain. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 53 hours, 51 minutes. Uh, ECOM reports uh, the uh, cabin pressures have leveled off now. Reading 4.7, 4.8. We now show Apollo 13 at 174,160 nautical miles away. And uh, going at a speed of uh, 3,338 uh, feet per second. This is Apollo Control Houston. Okay, Houston, the wastewater dump and O2 fuel cell purge are complete. Houston, roger. Yeah, those are the stock textures. Uh, well, I say that, but there's some weird stuff going on over there. It's Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 53 hours, 55 We're getting minutes. static from the land. That was, um... Uh, That's strange. Backup commander... For Apollo 13, John Young uh, returning that call from the spacecraft. Capsule communicator Vance Brand has left his console for a brief period of time to attend a meeting uh, on uh, the limb activation procedures and the uh, monitoring of the super uh, critical uh, helium tank readings. We're at uh, 53 hours, 55 minutes, and now show Apollo 13 at 174,309 nautical miles and traveling at a rate of speed of 3,500, uh, correction, uh, 3,330. I don't know why he says rate of speed, but This is Apollo All Control, right. Houston. That's just the second time I noticed he said that. Okay, Houston, the uh, lab CM Delta P is constant. 
We're going to go ahead with uh, hatch removal. Houston, roger. Delta P is the difference in Apollo pressure. Control Houston, uh, that was Fred Hayes uh, telling Houston that uh, they're ready to proceed with hatch opening. No, this is Jack's replacement. Apollo 13 apparently mystified for the moment uh, about John Young's voice. <laughs> We show 13 at an altitude of 174,664 nautical miles and with a velocity of 3,328 uh, feet per second. We're now at uh, 54 hours, seven minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Hopefully they'll communicate Roger, at some point. Go ahead, 13. Okay, uh, the LMP is entered the lamp. Roger. Apollo. Huh? Sure is. How you doing? Fine. Yeah, you're doing great, man. Thank you. I had a good CDR. You're doing it on your own now. Yeah, it feels like I'm back at home again, John Denon here. Hope you did a good job, John. Right. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 54 hours, 26 minutes into the flight. That was Jack Schweikert reporting that Fred Hayes is now inside the lunar module and uh, carrying on a brief discussion with uh, his former spacecraft commander, his backup commander for this mission, uh, John Young. We now show uh, Apollo 13 at an altitude of 175,307 nautical miles. I swear I, I've somehow repeated a tape, but I'm not sure. I don't think, I mean, I went by the times, so I don't think I would have repeated a tape, but this seems so familiar. But then again, it would seem familiar. <laughs> ah, it's so frustrating, I can't even tell if I've heard this recently before or whether I'm just remembering it from ages ago. Apollo 13 now traveling at a speed of uh, 3,314 feet per second. We're at uh, 54 hours, 27 minutes uh, now into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. So sometimes the tapes repeat because they're in the six this hour segments that overlap. Houston at uh, 54 hours, uh, 42 minutes. Now into the flight of Apollo Well, 13. that's the landscape we got to peek at. Just continuous 13, hills and, and now such. Shows an altitude of 175,826 uh, nautical miles. And its uh, speed reads uh, 3,304 feet per second. Network uh, has been advised by Goldstone that uh, the network does now have the capability of receiving television at any time. We will stand by uh, in the event uh, we should receive uh, an early television transmission. At this point, we do not expect to receive such, uh, but. We will stand by at uh, 54 hours, 43 minutes into the flight. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Okay, 
Fred, Houston's reading you loud and clear. Okay, uh, I've got up through uh, step seven now, and uh, I'm not getting much of a light uh, in the uh, helium indicator here. Why don't I uh, review for you uh, how we've proceeded, and uh, you look at the procedure you gave me and see if we missed anything. Roger, go ahead. Okay, we transferred to limp power and that uh, looked okay. I'm staring at a caution and wanting uh, power light and all the uh, red flags. And uh, we got both x uh, bus tie uh, breakers in. Uh, the utility lighting breaker is in. Then uh, AC bus B helium uh, PQS display. The AC bus B numeric lighting and AC bus B, inverter one, is uh, bus tie is closed. Uh, then I close the inverter one uh, breaker, and I've uh, selected on uh, 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 panel 16, uh, in the signal sensor breaker event. I've selected inverter one, and uh, put the helium monitor switch to supercrit, and I uh, have no light. Okay, Fred, let us take a look I at it. I was wondering, do we need uh, an eight? Yeah, do we need uh, possibly in one of the A9 uh, dock component uh, breakers in? Stand by one. Okay, well, I think there's photo scenery up ahead, but the landscape is. Pretty much just as rugged as uh, the stock scenery. Uh, or maybe it is still stock scenery. It's okay, pretty darn yeah, similar. Uh, the, it just uh, seems a little bit darker in tone. We're not too far away from Shanghai Roger, now. Dongshan is to uh, our right, basically back right, uh, right somewhere seven, over there. Didn't really fly over it. But yeah, it's amazing how rugged the terrain is. Okay, uh, I guess it's still stock and, uh, terrain. We're not going to have to uh, crank up the TM. That's the number we were looking for. Very good. Back out of this uh, in reverse, at least uh, as far as uh, getting this uh, part of it powered down. Stand by one. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, the big city is actually called Wenzhou over here. That's what we passed. You heard that report from Fred Hayes. Fred, this is Houston. Uh, go ahead and back out of this little test and uh, proceed. Roger. Our uh, super critical helium pressure reading was 720 pounds per square inch, uh, a very desirable number. Well, no problems there, apparently. at 
54 hours, 53 minutes uh, now into the flight. Apollo 13 at 176,171 nautical miles away from Earth. Uh, we're standing by now for uh, receipt of television. Apollo Control Houston, 54 hours, 55 minutes. Uh, we repeat that earlier report uh, from LIM pilot uh, Fred Hayes. He read his supercritical helium pressure at uh, 720 pounds per square inch, uh, well under the 770 pounds per square inch mark earlier identified uh, as a point for further scrutinization. We now show 13 uh, traveling at uh, 3,296 uh, feet per second and at an altitude of 176,240 nautical miles. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 54 hours, 57 minutes. Jack Lausma is now uh, filling the position of capsule communicator in the Mission Control Center. That was Jack who uh, received that re last report uh, from Lunar Module Pilot Fred Hayes. Standing by, this is Apollo Control Houston. Okay, we're back on. CSM power, time was 54 hours, 58 minutes, 50 seconds. Roger, Jack, 545850, thank you. Yep. Okay, Houston, we'll try to pick you up on high gain. Well, on the one hand, uh, getting photo scenery for these areas might make them less monotonous, but on the other hand, I don't think there's a whole lot to look at except for the odd town here and there. Amazing how much space there still is in the most populous country on the planet. I think it still is, right? Indian hasn't passed it, right? And 13, oh, we're I'll have to check that. I expect so. This is, uh, 13, yes, good. it's still the most populous. 13, we're ready on the TV when you are anytime. Okay, sounds good. We'll in a minute. We're just pranking the bike game now. The difference between China and India is 50 million. And uh, they're on either side of 1.4 billion. We're hearing you five square, Jim. I mean. Okay, you're coming through, okay. As you were on that, Jim, uh, we don't have you on high gain yet. Uh, we're still looking at you. 13 Houston. In this attitude, we suggest pitch 5, yaw 237 on the high gain. Over. Pitch 5, yaw 237. Apollo Control Houston, 55 hours, 5 minutes, uh, continuing to stand by for television transmission. Can you, uh, can you read the high gain now? Affirmative, Jack, we've got you on a high gain. It appears to us we're in wide beam, wide beam with. Yeah, uh, we can't get it to uh, come down and narrow. We try to switch to auto track or react, and, uh, and it uh, yaw drives around from 270 to zero. 
Yeah, pitch goes through about six degrees uh, around to 90. Uh, I'll try and, uh, we're sitting at manual now at the angles that you gave us, and I'll try and uh, get you in medium and narrow uh, B with uh, tweaking it up manually here. Roger, Jack. Uh, meanwhile, we'll look at the uh, situation you described there. Okay. And it does it on both uh, sets of uh, servo electronic power. Well, now the wind is very much to our benefit. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 55 hours, 7 minutes. We now show Apollo 13 at 176,598 nautical miles. Jack, what it looks like is that uh, when we hit 239 degrees uh, at this attitude, it hit some sort of scan limit or something and uh, drops off. Roger, Jack. Thank you. Okay, I'm trying to get wide uh, or medium uh, beam width now. Can you uh, pick up the TV in this condition here at all? Yep, uh, just endless hills, we'll really. To, uh, the beam with. There might be a city over to the left there. Okay, can you give us uh, maybe a slight maneuver? Jack, we'd like you to uh, check two high gain circuit breakers down on panel 25. Check your high gain group two and your high gain on the flight bus, over. Okay. Yeah, I was aiming okay. for one city, but I think I'll change Roger. which city I'm uh, pre-Shanghai city I'm aiming for. Because we either go for one on the right or one on the left, and the one on the left seems 13, a little bit bigger, so I'll go there. For you. We suggest that you... Uh, Go to roll 285 and try pitch 90 and yaw The zero. one on the right was Ningbo, and then the one on the left was Hangzhou. Okay. So it's Hangzhou that we'll try and fly over. Okay, uh, Houston, Apollo 13, I think we've got high gain locked up now. Do you confirm? We confirm that, Jim. We've got you locked up on the high gain and narrow beam. No, I don't think there was a city okay, over there, not good. after all. Right Just the usual farmland. That was uh, Spacecraft Commander Jim Lovell confirming that uh, they uh, had the uh, high gain narrow beam locked up. And, uh, we'd like to disable quads C and D. Use Alpha and Bravo, over. We're now re receiving a transmission, television transmission. C and D. Use Alpha and Bravo, over. Okay. Oh, a bit of a wiggle as the clouds reset. Okay, 13, we got the uh, Fredo on TV. Uh, Roger, Houston. What we plan to do for you today is start out in the uh, spaceship or uh, Odyssey and take you on through from Odyssey uh, into the tunnel into Aquarius and show you a little bit of uh, the landing uh, vehicle. And uh, your TV operator is now resting on the center couch, looking at uh, Fred Hayes, whose head is now just about at the beginning of the tunnel and his back is against the or the optical uh, area, and Fred will uh, now uh, transport himself 
That's a great picture, Jim. Uh, you got the light just right. Yeah, one of the nice things, uh, Jack, uh, particularly for a novice like myself, is the, uh, the ease of uh, moving around in here. And, uh, of course, as you know from working in the uh, command module simulator, it's really quite a boon to uh, have zero gravity as an eight. And it's getting pretty uh, confining, really, at one G to move around very much in there, and it's uh, quite easy in this environment. Ah, oh, the winds have changed a bit. I noticed we were slightly going to the side. You can sort of see we're getting pushed to the side there. Not really getting pushed on the tail anymore. And that is because, well, we are. Um, the wind is pushing us to the side at a rate of 111 knots, which is not insignificant given given our current speed. Okay. Uh, right under uh, Jim now. He's uh, actually standing on a uh, what looks to be a can here, and uh, for the sake of all the people back there, uh, housed inside this can is the. Uh, the Lair Masson engine, or uh, hopefully you can see my hand I'm resting on top of right now. The engine that uh, we used to get off of the moon. Immediately uh, adjacent to uh, the uh, engine cover here, I have my hand on a, a white box now, which uh, has been shown before. There's no uh, little fuzzy this, uh, patch of the, uh, static uh, on the terrain uh, there. Again, still stock uh, terrain. Tank, which will, uh, Interesting. Supply oxygen and uh, water for cooling while on the lunar surface. Uh, this uh, device uh, we hope to uh, make use of for uh, planned four hours. And I sure hope I remember to get photo scenery of uh, Shanghai itself at least. Right, uh, right behind the cliff. A uh, couple of square packages I now have my hand on here. One here and one right below are our OPSs, which are in essence the emergency uh, oxygen supplies, which are good for some uh, 40 to 45 minutes. These are when we uh, get ready to uh, mount up and head outside, uh, we'll be placed up on top of the plinth. Uh, the second backpack is uh, mounted down on the uh, limb floor uh, and will position uh, right between uh, the two of us. I have my hand on it uh, at this time. Roger, Fred, we see it. Uh, the picture's coming through real good and uh, your description is good. We see uh, Tim's got the camera oriented uh, the way we like to look at it. So uh, keep talking. Okay, I guess uh, everybody is uh, pretty much envisioned the uh, space program as being uh, all uh, a lot of exotic electronics, and uh, certainly a lot of it is. But uh, thought it bring out a couple items here uh, in conjunction with the plit. Uh, after the first DVA, uh, to get a very accurate measurement of the amount of water that's left in the plit, we're going to make use of uh, this bag I'm showing now to uh, collect the remaining water out of the plit and see uh, just how much we really did have left. 
and uh, hopefully on uh, future missions to be uh, able to extend uh, safely uh, the allowable time on these units uh, even a little further. And uh, my other hand, I have the uh, mechanism by which we uh, determine just how much uh, water we really have in this bag. And I guess this, uh, an apt description for this device would be um, a fish scale. And uh, you can see I'm weighing myself right now, and uh, it says I weigh uh, actually less than zero right now. Guess the <laughs> calibration isn't too good. That'll be the day. I think even you would weigh zero here, Jack. Okay. Well, less than zero does takes talent. Apollo Control Houston, we now show 13 at 175,000 nautical miles in altitude. Well, there's a suspiciously square patch of light terrain there, so... That's probably photo scenery. Messing uh, up, to, but uh, still photo scenery. Okay, we can sort of see and, uh, the see city of Hangzhou up ahead. I think there's just a suburb right now. Let's keep going in this direction for a bit. Okay, uh, Jack, well, uh, Fred's putting away my, uh, 
helmet. You're looking over into Fred Station now. Now we're going a little bit fast okay now. Before, do I have to adjust it? Uh, we have a hunch that uh, the setting might be in peak, but we recommend uh, average on the AOC if you haven't got it there already. We're in average, Jack. Okay, and uh, we're getting a good picture of the LMP side with the uh, Theta over there. Hey, Jack, uh, one question on the command box in here. Uh, do I, I have the DAP right now, wide dead band. Do you want me to begin setting up narrow dead band and nulling the race to start PTC again? Well, I have to say, my map shows a lot more developed terrain to the right. But the photo scenery seems to be very green, possibly because it's older. Uh, what I'm uh, fishing out now, Jack, is another uh, new piece of hardware that uh, uh, we're taking along this time as a result of some comments made on them. Uh, anyway, uh, time to turn to the right now. Follow the highways into Shanghai. Let's see if our in flight map has the stuff. Shanghai Pudong. Um, yeah, that's the one we want. Pudong it is. Looks like we've got a bad patch of photo scenery uh, right there. Funny noises, uh, Hopefully Shanghai is looking okay. It's just uh, probably the drink bag. Doesn't look like I did a bad job on the fuel estimates. Yeah, there's just a bad stripe of photo scenery right here. begin descent. About 80 nautical miles out. Oh, there's a brief look at what it looks like with our clouds and shadows okay, and Jack, such. No, too little fast. Little okay, it's uh, looking through the uh, AOT in uh, position uh, four, uh, right rear, and uh, we're looking back uh, toward the uh, over the uh, side hatch at the uh, aft side of the uh, service module. Uh, 
Is it too dark a picture, Jack? Uh, you think the f-stop open may help? No, Fred, it's got to be centered up a little bit. That's uh, primarily what you have to do. Uh, Jack, uh, we can't turn it up anymore because uh, the uh, side hatch is only in one part of the AOT. The rest of that blackness you're seeing is really uh, uh, space. <laughs> it's space. There's now a whole lot of mystery about where the center of Shanghai is. The roads lead directly to it. It's very, very obvious. Okay, we see you moving the uh, camera up to the AOT land. You can sort of see the highway I'm following below us. Not always the case that highways go right to the center of the city. But in this case, it seems to be about that way. And, uh, There's definitely another suspicious patch over there. That little strip that looks like a river, but isn't a river. At least I don't see any river that That's should be actually, there. Uh, beginning to look a little bigger now. Uh, you can see quite distinctly uh, some of the features uh, with the naked eye. And, uh, so far there are lots of little canals in the, Shanghai. Yeah. Lots of little rivers, uh, but nothing like that, gray, I don't uh, think. You can see some of the canals I was talking about down there, glinting in the sunlight. Yeah, I just uh, messed up it right around here. So the airport's right at the coast. 
a four runway affair. Sort of like LAX in a way. I guess ZSSS is another option. That's the international. Well, hmm. I've landed at ZSS bef ZSSS before. That's uh, Jim Level now. Well, a little, fast, at, a little bit fast. A little bit fast. Jack Swigert in Odyssey. We're at uh, 55 hours uh, 38 minutes into the flight of Apollo 13. Control Houston, uh, 55 hours 39 minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, we presently show uh, Odyssey and Aquarius at an altitude of 175,552 nautical miles. I guess miles. we'll go fast uh, enough for a, a bit. Speed of it's just all these clouds are not going to allow Although us to we, see uh, stuff. No uh, voice confirmation as to exactly. Uh, and we are approaching uh, Shanghai proper. Spacecraft Commander Jim Lovell first uh, went inside uh, Aquarius. Uh, the flight plan called for a for an ingress time of uh, 54 hours or 30 minutes, and we assume that uh, this occurred around that time. And finally, I'll. Uh, Jacks let me back into the Odyssey as we slide on through the tunnel here. Are you still 13? Are you still on TV? Yeah, we sure are. We got a uh, good picture of the skipper there. You can still see the highway to our right, and there's ZSSS, the airport to our left. You can sort of see the highways pointing directly at the city center here. We can see the city center up ahead.
Okay, we're seeing a good picture of the probe there, uh, Jim, and uh, looks like the characters uh, shaved before the show this time. <laughs> yeah, there's still lots of canals here. You can well, see some of the waterways. Of course, some of the roofs are blue too. Yeah, that may be uh, my first and last time, no Jack. It took for one hour. There's a big it. spike there. Uh, yep. Yeah, well, that's downtown right there. I don't know if that blue spike is supposed to be there. Not sure. Seems unlikely, actually. Uh, we might uh, give you a quick. Uh Unless they've built a new building at Shanghai that I don't know about that's really, really tall. Not sure. Possible. Wasn't really keeping track. We'll just land at uh, ZSPD as planned. Okay, no music, no music. No music. That looks like Dubai. That looks like the same building at Dubai except placed here. Cheats. Not allowed to take the Burj Dubai and put it in the middle of Shanghai. At least the whole tiered thing is about the same. A big benefit. Has been a big benefit to us in, uh, in passing some of the time away and our transit out to the. Get the strange feeling that there are way too many trees being placed by the autogen too. In Odyssey, while it's playing uh, the theme from 2001. We can see the airport to the right there. Unfortunately, I don't know exactly. I've got the tool to edit the scenery, but I don't know how exactly to edit a specific building. After all, there are a lot of buildings. Hunting for that particular blue one in the tool, the world editor, is not so okay, easy. Jim, uh, we're seeing a tape recorder now and, uh, At least. Just by the way, in my cursory the attempt the to do similar things in other locations. Okay, well, I should be able to land before we get to the incident, or maybe I'll touch down right when they say, Houston, we have a problem. We will see. We're getting close to it, though. Way too many trees. Okay, Jim, uh, it's been a real good TV show. Uh we think we ought to conclude it from here now. Uh, what do you think? Roger, sounds good. And this is the crew of Apollo 13. Wish everybody there a nice evening. And uh, we're just about ready to close out our inspection of Aquarius and get back for a pleasant evening at Odyssey. Good night. Thank you, 13. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 55 hours, 47 minutes. Apollo 13 presently at uh, 177,861 nautical miles away. Velocity now reading uh, 3,263 feet per second. Apollo 13, Houston. The next thing we'd like you to do is to... Uh, go ahead. We'd like you to roll right to 060 and know your rates for photography of the comet Bennett. To do that, we'd like you to enable quads C and D for the maneuver. Use all your quads. And in precisely one minute, we'd like you to terminate the battery charge and battery B. One other qu request we'd like to uh, have okay, you well done. One other request we'd like to have you verify your high gain configuration. We'd like to know what track mode, what servo, and what beam width. Those are all fine. It's fine to ask for okay, those things. Jack, uh, during the TV, we were auto track, narrow beam width, 
and the primary electronics. And we had a good lockup. Uh, just after we started the maneuver, I was able to lock you up and get uh, real good signal strength. And it just seemed that right there at about 239 degrees uh, in yaw, that the uh, signal strength uh, would just drop off and uh, yaw would go to zero and pitch would go to 90. Now, I don't think Roger, that they could have just... The, uh TV show was great. I don't think they could have just decided not to stir okay, the cryo right tanks, so. But. Okay, I'm going to maneuver to 060, 090, and 0. Okay, we're going to maneuver to 060, 090, and 0. But we sure do know what happens when they do decide to stir the cryo tanks. And 13, we'd like you to uh, check C4 thruster. The reflections on the windscreen are sort of distracting me. Okay, Jack, the battery charge The way they're changing the in a choppy Roger, sort of way. Jack. And uh, we got a reading of uh, minus two degrees in the docking uh, index. We'd like to uh, know if that's 2.0 precise or if it's 2.1 or 1.9. No, it's minus 2.0 precisely. Thank you. Thirteen, we've got one more item for you when you get a chance. We'd like it to uh, stir up your cryo tanks. Yep, there in it addition, is. I have a shaft and trunnion okay. for a look at the Comet Bennett if you need it. Okay, stand by. Very soft Betty voice in this case. We have landed. Um, I'm so low I can't even see the little taxi way markings. Let's go outside. Okay, this way. Now we've had a long pause because I let it uh, at this point after asking for the stirring of the cryo tanks, I decided to leave the pause in. Yeah. And I'm going to let it run just a little bit longer because the next thing from from Apollo 13 is Okay, and on that note, having arrived at Shanghai and at that critical juncture, I will say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.